Our next speaker is Nick, Nick Rittar. Um Brief bio on Nick, he grew up on a uh, 50,000 acre sheep station uh, come National Park in western New South Wales before becoming a software architect and computer engineer for Ericsson. Nowadays he runs Milkwood, which is an independent training organisation that brings world leading experts on sustainable agriculture and food to Australia and helps broad acre to backyard farmers grow better food. Thank you, Nick. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, Milkwood, we are a small organisation currently that runs courses teaching people how to grow food that's good for people, communities and the planet. Everything from really small scale backyard farmers through to broad acre sustainable agriculture. Um, we've been doing this for about seven years and our basic business model is we find the best people in the world on a particular topic, we bring them to Australia and uh, people come and do our courses. So we run about 70 events a year, uh, 70 courses a year, it was about 1500 students and uh, we try to bring the world's best people. So um, there we've got Joel Salatin, uh, Time Magazine called him the most influential <coughs> farmer in the world, uh, featured in an Academy Award winning documentary, Food Inc. Um, Sandor Katz, uh, The Art of Fermentation, a New York Times bestseller on creating fermented foods, value adding food products. Um, uh, down here, Alan Savory, who I'm sure a few of the graziers in the room would know of, uh, invented the holistic management process of uh, building soil fertility while uh, increasing profitability of grazing enterprises. Um, this year we're bringing uh, Jean-Martin Fortier out to Australia. Uh, he uh, has a, a market gardening system uh, that he's pioneered in Canada. Uh, he's making 150,000 Australian dollars off one acre with one full-time job. Um, these are highly innovative entrepreneurial farming methods um, that have been proven all around the world. And uh, what we do is we bring these ideas to Australia and people choose to come and do our courses. We don't get any government subsidies at all. Uh, we're 100% um, funded by the people who pay to do our courses. No formal qualifications. The courses are designed to give people the knowledge that they want rather than um, some kind of a formal certificate. What I'm here to talk to you about uh, today links a lot closer um, uh, to what Tony and Sandra were talking about with the On The Grow um, group and what Bridget was talking about with the um, food and wine clusters. Uh, I want the Southern Highlands to be synonymous with high quality food and sustainable agriculture. Um, what's in it for me? I teach people how to do sustainable agriculture. So I think that if you guys um, can make the Southern Highlands a centre of excellence in that area, then there's a business opportunity for me. Nice and simple. Um, the question is, how are you actually going to do that? At the moment, um, we want to really you know, kickstart and massively increase the volume, quality and sustainability and profitability of food production in the Southern Highlands. Does anybody in the room not want that? So I can take it from the fact that none of you have shouted me down. You all want that? Agreed? Yes. All right. So how, how could we do that? It's a complex approach. I think that um, anybody who says that one simple solution um, will solve uh, a, a complex cultural uh, challenge like this is uh, full of shit. All right. We, uh, obviously this needs to be balanced and nuanced and come from lots of different directions. But I, um, in talking to a couple of people up here, have, uh, have narrowed down one simple project that I think that could really help and work very well with the projects that are already happening in this area, um, which could kickstart this kind of um, uh, change in the way that the Southern Highlands is seen and potentially uh, a return to the way the Southern Highlands was seen as a clean, green, sustainable uh, source of food for the Sydney Basin uh, and beyond. The problem at the moment, there are thousands upon thousands of hectares of land in this area which are completely underutilised. Uh, we've got a huge increase in, in property prices over the last uh, 30 years and that's meant that it's really hard for small scale agriculture to compete uh, for land use at the current property prices. Uh, the district's a net importer of food so you don't have any food security. 
Um, the average age of farmers is 57 years and increasing. Employment costs are very high for small farm enterprises. And the margins on food nowadays are absolutely rubbish. There's been a mantra in agriculture in Australia for the last 50 years, which is get out, get big or get out. And frankly, that doesn't work for communities and it doesn't work, uh, I don't think, for the Southern Highlands, especially where you're in a place where um, land sizes are relatively small compared to the Western Plains. You need something a little bit more innovative, a little bit more entrepreneurial. How do we solve this problem? It comes down to a particular type of person. It's these guys. These guys uh, were just one group of students that we put through a two-week design course teaching them how to um, design properties, design enterprises, and design communities. Um, these people each gave up uh, 2,000 of their own hard-earned dollars to spend two weeks learning how to design sustainable agricultural projects. They are passionate and they are um, demanding opportunities to be able to practice agriculture. But how many of those people do you think can afford a couple of million bucks to buy a beautiful 10 acre property on the outskirts of Barrel? None of them. They can afford time and they can afford, en they've got a lot of energy and a lot of passion for these kind of projects, but they haven't got any cash because they can't afford the land. That's the only barrier to these people getting involved in these kind of projects. So I want you guys to enable them to come here to farm on your land. Would anyone mind a passionate young person coming to produce incredibly high quality food on their property? Do you think there might be people in the Southern Highlands who would be prepared to support that? I think so. There's one right there. Entrepreneurial small enterprises are able to command a massive premium on the price of their products. They are incredibly viable small businesses, as long as you can take the land costs out of it. In this case, this is uh, from Feather and Bone, a uh, catalogue coming out of Sydney, $22.50 per kilo for a whole chicken. 70 bucks a kilo for a Scotch fillet steak. People are prepared to pay a lot of money for high quality food. At the moment, the Southern Highlands is not capturing enough of this market. There's a huge market in Sydney for it. There's a huge market in the Southern Highlands for it. Yet, you're having to be a net importer of these kind of products. This is from Fraser Bailey, who uh, is down at Maruya, part of the Sage um, Farmers uh, Market down there. Uh, it's realistic to expect to gross 120,000 per acre per year with intensive ag annual vegetable production with only one person full time in Australia. He's doing it. He's teaching people to do it down there. He's got one intern who's working on one plot of land in Maruya, um, learning how to farm this way. He would love to scale that up to teach more people. What's his problem? Access to land. A little bit of capital maybe to help him get going. How do we enable these entrepreneurial small farmers in the Southern Highlands? How do they, what do these farmers need to establish themselves? They need access to land, they need a low cost of living, and they need a supportive community. That's it. So the idea is a small farm incubator project. It's a place where people get um, access to land for a limited tenancy before they have to work on their own to find um, or the, sorry, they have to move onto their own two feet and support themselves in a standard commercial relationship with a landowner. This isn't a, a, a one-stop a one shop. It's a program that puts entrepreneurial young farmers and introduces them to a community and gives them some support while they're setting up their small business. Um, this is a map of the United States with small farm incubator projects highlighted. There's over a hundred of them in the United States, where we've, we've had a couple of small ones attempts in Australia, but I believe there's an opportunity for the Southern Highlands to lead, um, lead Australia on setting up such a small farm incubator here. The idea is that you'll provide, this is one model and totally flexible to um, uh, variations upon this, but each uh, 10 farmers start off, they've got two years of tenancy and they have a plot between 0.4, so that's uh, one acre in the old, old, old speak, uh, to five hectares. Shared equipment, small tractor, implements, delivery trucks and the like, 
water supply, storage and processing sheds, mentorship and subsidised housing. Eventually, they get help with a brokerage of relationships with local landowners and landholders. So there are lots of different legal models for that to work from just straight out rental to share farming and beyond, but people need support in feeling comfortable to allow these kind of entrepreneurial farmers onto their land. Um, the two year internship program uh, or incubator program gives them the uh, ability to get to know the community and the community to get to know them so that there's less fear involved in those relationships. Surprisingly small amount of money to get something like this off the ground. Uh, you have plenty of land. So the land cost is effectively zero. If council, which I've been um, suggested that council has land which could support a project such as this. Uh, beyond that, a relatively small infra infrastructure cost. It's pretty generous there with the million dollars um, to be able to set up 50 acres, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, five hectares, uh, no, 50 acres, sorry, all up, um, of, of land to be able to provide those 10 plots. Uh, basic infrastructure, and then an annual cost in, um, in services, including uh, accommodation subsidies so that people can rent um, properties within the, within the Shire so that they are uh, not having to bear the full cost of their lifestyle change uh, when they first come to, come to the area. Uh, relatively modest amount could be turning over just off the, off the incubator project itself uh, about $4 million in uh, in produce per year across a wide range of different types of produce. Uh, vegetables, eggs, chickens, even up to larger animals. Uh, so in a sense, in the turnover that's going back into the local community would effectively pay for the incubator within a few, within a few years. The Highlands Farm Incubator would be a nationally significant project um, that would stimulate a culture of entrepreneurial small, entrepreneurial small farms in the highlands. It would position the southern highlands as a food hub, working with, with the existing projects and the other projects that are happening in the area. And it would boost the local food economy. But it basically needs you guys to make it happen. This kind of project is going to be driven by local people, um, not from an outsider like myself. Um, there's, there's business opportunities for me to be involved in it, but I want to encourage um, uh, the Food Hub program and others within the area to take this idea and work with it um, to try and really make the Southern Highlands a place which is synonymous with good quality food and entrepreneurial small farmers. Thank you very much.